Amanda Koo joins us. She's director of eClarity. It's very interesting. Amanda's story is she was once a corporate banker. Now she's a jeweler. She's a mom. And she's also making waves in the industry. Hi, Amanda. What a pleasure to have you on the Double X Files. How are you today? Hi, Yasmin. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great, thanks. So what's the average day for a jeweler? Oh, um, you know, you look at many, many diamonds, gemstones, and then you grade them, you look at them under the microscope. This is what we do every day. Okay. You mean to say you get an influx of new gemstones every day coming your way that you have to assess? Or are you just working with a pool that you have in your hands? Um, we have about two shipments of new gemstones or diamonds or colored diamonds every week. So depending on whether we are sourcing them for our, our stores or we're sourcing them for customers, um, on average twice a week. I see. It does take a week to take a look at the entire shipment. So that's quite a bit of work. Well, Amanda, thank you for taking some time off uh, to talk to us. I was just talking about the return of tourists to our island. Uh, Mm -hmm. And also, you know, retail shops bustling a little bit more at Changi Airport and such. Does that give you hope for for your business, for businesses in general? Um, It's very interesting because when uh, the lockdown happened in year 2020, I think jewelry industry has overall gone um, online. So whether we go, we have gone into live streaming. Um, for myself, we have gone into webinars, um, selling online. So we we are already very excited in this new uh, platform. Um, of course, when people are coming back and uh, you know we can start to be very personal again, jewelry pieces are always best seen with your eyes. So, um, yeah, I think I think the return of tourists is wonderful. OK, well, I'm happy for you. And nice to know that you really went online and uh, didn't quite have to suffer that much during the pandemic. But surely there were challenges for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, um, when it happens, I think everyone stopped exploring digitalization where everyone was talking about it. You have to start working on it. So we were very busy exploring uh, different ways to um, go online because um, the, the default way to go online was live streaming. I think jewelers were all going online in terms of live streaming. Um, but what I did uh, was something that I know the best, which is giving seminars um, pre-pandemic. So during the lockdown, we went on to um, giving webinars. So we give different topics on diamonds, on gemstones, on bespoke customization, and you know also comparing lab-grown diamond and natural diamonds. That being our most popular topic, actually. Mm. Mm-hmm. This is because there's a move towards sustainability among your clients and, and people who want sparkly things on their hands, around their necks, you know, the earlobes, uh, want to also know that everything that they wear is sustainable and properly sourced. I think it comes from a few angles, um, and I'd like to share with you a story. So a few years ago, when I brought my kids to have McDonald's um, and then we ordered McFlurry, thinking that we we should share because we should cut down on, on, on calories. And then I wanted to get an extra spoon and I was not allowed by my sons to get the extra spoon because they want to save the world. Um, that inspired me that, you know, the younger generation is just so ready to to love the world and protect the world. And we in our generation, we, you know, meaning Yasmin and myself, um, you know, we, we, we have a lot to learn and a lot to catch up. So I think understanding how the younger generation see the world, um, it becomes something that I authentically care about, like really care about the world. That's one thing. Second thing, it's also, you know, the product innovation was ready. It was commercially interesting to bring in like grown diamonds because the prices were right. The quality was good. Um, and and so, you know, with all these together, um, like grown diamond is a meaningful business model that is empowering the world, empowering customer needs at that time. Interesting that your son taught you a lesson, huh? So explain this whole story of sustainable jewellery to me. Where do we begin? 
Um, so I think I'm seeing it from a few perspectives. One perspective is lab-grown diamonds. So I explain to customers that um, natural diamonds are grown under the world, 90 to 120 kilometer with high pressure, high temperature, diamonds are grown. And lab-grown diamond is basically mimicking this environment, but in a lab and diamonds are grown and they are physically and chemically sharing the same property. So if we understand that um, accepting lab-grown diamond becomes um, possible and is with a noble cause, so that is a good foundation to start. Second is, you know, reduce the excess capacity, reduce wastage. You know how, Yasmin, like, if you own, I'm sure, like if you own a one carat and then you buy a two carat, you stop wearing the one carat. So I'm also starting a new community. It's a name under the sample line where customers could come in and subscribe to the service where they rent out jewelry that they are not wearing anymore and they get to rent a new piece of jewelry every month. So instead of buying, you know, your, your, your 10th pair of earrings that you may wear or you don't wear, now you have the options of renting, returning, renting out, you know, and have a sharing community. That's a very novel idea. Uh, are you one of the pioneers for that here in Singapore? Um, I, based on our research, we could be one of the first in Singapore to have a subscription model. Um, I think in the past, when you think about jewelry rental, it's always for your wedding day or that very special day that you rent that one piece of jewelry. So you still continue to buy on a, on, on a yearly basis, on a monthly basis. Um, in terms of subscription model, we want to really encourage that you know, sometimes renting could be better than buying and then you actually get a new pair of earrings every month. You know, why I say earrings is because we were very into this Zoom kind of era where earrings can be seen more than, let's say, a bracelet or a ring. But every item is popular right now. Yeah, because uh, we're actually meeting face to face. Soon you're going to be renting out anklets <laughs> as yeah. well, and maybe even toe rings. <laughs> you never know. But, but do you? Yeah, but do you have to um, select people who are uh, qualified for your rental service very carefully? Because jewelry is something you entrust to someone else. I mean, normally you pass it on to your loved one, your niece, your daughter, your child, uh, and, and here you are, you know, putting it around to strangers clearly you must gain the trust of the people who own these precious pieces in the first place yes so in the beginning uh, subscribing to the sample line was something that was um, only by invitation so we only invite uh, people to join the platform um, now as we progress we have more uh, measures in place for example um, you know we we need a copy of the ic we also have the options of uh, um, having an insurance before you start to subscribe so um, there are more measures in place to make sure that um, the people who are subscribing and also renting out are in a very safe space yeah, okay, that sounds mm. good. And I, I think I understand now when you say earrings and necklaces, because that's a little bit one size fits all versus a ring that's harder to fit, isn't it? That's right, Yasmin. Um, but you have 10 fingers and then... Uh, <laughs> So it's interesting, like I'm a size nine on my forefinger, but probably a size 11 on my middle finger and then a size 10 on my second finger. So, you know, we could we could try around with the different fingers and eClarity has this little, uh, we call it a little ring snuggie. If it's too loose, you know, we have something to tighten it. So we have we have little creative uh, solution to uh, holding the ring better in different fingers. Okay. What other trends in jewellery came about because of the pandemic? It's interesting you say people want to adorn the upper part of their body more because of Zoom. Uh, any Anything else? I mean, did they prefer sort of cleaner designs that they felt more confident to buy of the internet versus something that was a little more embellished? Um, actually, to your surprise, uh, Yasmin, I think Singaporeans were very boring. Uh, pre-pandemic, you know, 
we, we solitaire. We were, yeah, right. The yeah. bigger the better, right? You have a one carrot, your friend bought a 1.2 and you're asking for 1.5. It just get bigger and bigger and it's colorless and it's round. Um, so I think inspired by our experience shopping online, we are all experts in shopping online now. Um, and then we are exposed to fashion and pictures and Instagrams and, and TikTok and all that. Um, I find that Singaporeans are getting more and more interesting, you know. So they're starting to look at pink diamonds, blue diamonds, uh, black gold, champagne gold, fancy shapes. So no longer round, you know, you look for your marquee shape, your emerald shape. And yeah, so it's actually getting more and more exciting. In terms of ring design, we also like something that's not symmetrical. It's oh. no longer the classic with a roll of diamonds on the side, but you kind of can have it not symmetrical. You know, one oh. diamond on the side, no diamond on the side. Yeah, very artistic people. Nice to know. And it sounds like social media has helped us a lot in our education. Okay. Um, Amanda, do stay on the line. We'll continue this chat with you. Uh, Amanda Koo is Director of eClarity. We've got to go for a break here on The Double X File. This is The Double X Files. Her views, her stories on CNA 938. So did you hear from Amanda Koo, Director of eClarity, that us Singaporeans getting less boring when it comes to our jewellery choices? I know we love the solitaires, but apparently asymmetrical jewellery is also, you know, the order of the day. Nice to know. Amanda, I learned so much from you. Uh, listen, you also offer in-depth consultation for clients, uh, not just giving educational talks. So what's the most common mistake people make when they want to approach this whole jewellery buying experience? Very interesting question, Yasmin. Um, you know, I think people, when they overread and um, people like to come in store and pretend that they know how to use the microscope. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the, and you can tell when they're pretending. Yeah, yeah. I, I think 99.9% .9 people are pretending, right? They come in and say, can I have a loop? Can I have a microscope? <laughs> no. And then you ask, what are you trying to see? Um, because you know, um, I was a graduate from NUS and then I went for a postgraduate in gemology. Mm -hmm. I learned for years before I truly know how to hold a microscope properly, correctly. So, um, yeah, so I, 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 I see with a, with a smile in my heart that, you know, the young people coming in asking for microscope, I say, sure. Let me guess, and they're trying to look out for flaws. Yeah, they are. They oh. are. But, you know, you know, there are dust on the diamond and the, the a very crucial learning point is how do you differentiate a piece of dust on the surface of the diamond versus an inclusion inside the diamond. Mm -hmm. mm. So and, I this is <laughs> And somebody who's it. not trained obviously will not know that. So you, you let you do you let do you allow them for you know that ten minutes of being like an imposter? <laughs> I, I usually let them have two minutes maybe and then I will start to start my education. So I, you know how there are four C's in the diamond. Yes, I mean, you know that there's yes. character, there's color. Do you remember? There's yes. clarity. And then there is one more. Oh, no. Uh, no, <laughs> give it to me. I'm going to take forever to, to dredge that up. Uh, so cut. So Cut, okay. Right, so there are four C's. So we, we share how, how you prioritize the four C's. Right. So which one? So I always present two diamonds. Unfortunately, I can't present diamond over radio. If not, I would do that. And I'll ask you, which C can you see first? Can you see carrot first? Or can you see the inclusions first, which is clarity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so learning how to prioritize the forces get you better value out of the money. Actually, gen generally, um, the average buyer would prioritize perhaps clarity last. That's right. Yes, Min. So yeah. you are... Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, because you probably start with, okay, what's the average? You'd start with, uh, I don't know, the, the, the size of it first. Well done. Yeah. yeah. And then and you'd go for the shape. Uh, yes, shape is not one of the four C, but yes, shape is important. Uh -huh. Wouldn't that be the cut though? And, and yeah, cut or the color, right? Uh -huh. Color, I often describe color as water versus honey drink. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that you need microscope to differentiate water and honey drink, right? Yeah. So you use eye and you can compare. Is, is, so it, that, is it easier to sell diamonds or jewelry to people who have bad eyesight? Yeah. <laughs> 
I I have guys who come in and say, Amanda, I'm colorblind. Um, so I can't tell the difference. I say, too bad your girlfriend is not colorblind, right? <laughs> That's a good one. You have an answer for everything, Amanda. All right. I want to talk about your journey a, a little bit. Um, you were a computer science major and then you became a corporate banker. And then you went to the U.S. to study gemology and you really wanted to start this business because you grew up in, in the jewelry business, too, which is a, a fascinating background. Uh, you do realize that a lot of women who study STEM subjects uh, apparently do not go on to pursue STEM jobs and you fall in that category. How do you explain yourself? <laughs> um, okay, so I I think studying computer science was so important to me because my mind was totally artistic before the computer science study. I was very much into literature, acting, singing. And, you know, when you are in computer science, only results matter. So don't express yourself and no need to explain yourself. You just need but the get, data and the right answers. Get it work. Is your program working? Mm -hmm. So that, that really opens up this uh, problem solving skill in my mind. And I think when I thought of a way to incorporate. All right. I hope we haven't lost Amanda. I'm just going to give a second. Amanda, are you there? Okay, it looks like the lines dropped. We'll see if we can continue. Great, that was Amanda. Oh, hi, there she is. Um, sorry, Amanda, do, do you mind just recapping that uh, last bit? Because we lost you for the last sort of four seconds. Sure. So I was saying finding a way to incorporate or integrate my study versus my interest. Right. So my study was computer science. My interest was diamond and fashion and beauty. And then I integrated it with an online lifetime diamond database. So the moment I thought about it, I know it's time that we could give back to the world, you know, where you revolutionize the jewelry industry by having this integration. And most of us can log on to your diamond database to see the availability of diamonds in actual time? Yes, definitely. Oh, all right. Yeah. What a way to give back. Yeah, yeah. So that's your pairing of your art and your computer science background. Lovely. Amanda, thank you for talking to us today. And you're such a joy. Um, I learned a lot from you. Thank you. Take yes, care. Amanda Koo yeah. is director of eClarity, my guest on the Double X-Files.